Hello again. Now, I've got up early today. I just wanted to show you a book I bought the other day for 50 pence. These were marvellous books in the old days. And they showed all sorts, but there's an interesting bit in it. I'll try to keep on the page. It's about the induction coil. No, I think we can just about get it in. If you wanted to copy it or have a look at it yourself. And this is the other page. It's worth just having a read of this. And that's the induction coil. Which uh, is used to get higher voltages. And it goes down to there. Now what it says is, the induction coil. This brings us to the induction coil, a most interesting apparatus, based on a transformer principle where we must have very high voltages, even up to two or three million. An induction coil is used. For those who would like to make care of it, make one of their own, we refer to the excellent handbook. Now if you listen to this and find one, it's good. Induction coils for amateurs. Number 11 in the Model Engineer series. Briefly, it consists of an electromagnet car with a make and break or interrupter working automatically, which makes and breaks the current in a magnet coil many times a second. As the current flows, a car is magnetised. The secondary coil consists of many thousands in ter of turns of fine wire. Its ends are connected to terminals with spark gaps. Each time the interrupter makes contact current sorry makes current flow in the primary coil, the magnetism in the car induces a current in the secondary. While the action of braking also induces a secondary current as the magnetism dies out. This brake current is in the opposite direction to the make current and is the stronger by far of the two. The quicker the magnetism dies out, the stronger will the current be, and so we use a condenser connected across the interrupter. This is a simple arrangement made of two sets of tinfoil sheets interleaved, but separated by waxed paper. The action is to absorb the current quickly so that the magnetism dies quicker. Now, this is, it gets interesting here. A really large coil may have 200 miles of secondary wire and there would be perhaps 300,000 turns. That would take a bit of doing, wouldn't it? <laughs> you need my machine to do that. The spark it would give might jump, and this is a good one, a gap of two feet or even more. Can you imagine how big that coil would be? Induction coils are used in X-ray work, also in ignition apparatus for motor end car engines and in telephones. A medical or shocking coil is a simplified arrangement without a secondary winding. The dying magnetism at break induces a current in the same coil in which a primary current flows. There must be many more turns on this than the ordinary primary coils of a proper induction coil. Now, <laughs> you look at these old books and you know, they're really good actually. You know, for what I paid for it, it's, it's pretty neat. And it goes on to explain transformers and things. Uh, I wonder what else there might be in here. Let's see. Um, yeah, it tells you about um, induction. Uh, let's see if it's out interesting. Now then. Look at that. Oops, if we can get it in the light. making a cell. Now believe it or not I actually used these when I was a kid. Yes we still had these around. Yeah I'm getting them out. Actually I'm 60 but I don't feel it at all. I'm very lucky. I've got a good good health and everything. Nothing wrong with me at all. I think it's because if you keep your mind busy you're, you're pretty good. If you sit in front of a TV all day, you're going to go mind no more, completely freak out. 
Now these, these are interesting things. Now I do have a plan of the one of these from an old book. It's a Wimsurst machine. Fascinating thing, but I'm afraid the spark's disappointing. If you're imagining you're getting a big spark off it, I wouldn't. It's very disappointing. Uh -huh. I've gone past it. Let's see now. Um, let's see. There was a little experiment that was rather interesting in here. Yeah, there's an interesting one. It turns a little, um, little spiked wheel around. And there's another one, another little circuit just turning a wheel around, acting like a steam engine. Then it goes on to show you use the uh, make little ones. Do a little experiment. Handy if you're just getting to know about electricity and uh, things like that. Let's see. Ohm's law. Yes, we know all Ohm's law. Well, we don't know Ohm's law, do we? Because we're just learning. At least I presume most of you who are watching this are. Now, this is an interesting thing. What happens is the little burner heats up. This is what a spirit lamp is here. It's a little burner. You could be use a candle, actually. What's happening is that those are copper rods on top of a... push into a cork inside a, a method of holding it up so it turns round. The copper rods get attracted to the magnet. As you heat them up, they lose the, the ability to be attracted. So it turns round and it acts like a little motor. It's a very old idea, but very interesting. You can see a little... That shows how it's done for the bottom. And that's the actual drawing. These old books are fascinating, they really are. They're... Uh, just trying to find what was the trying. Oh yes. Now this, I'm going to show you this. I actually have a uh, one that I got from a college that they'd thrown out, believe it or not. And uh, it actually had a pack of gold leaf with it. You know, price of gold nowadays it's expensive, but we'll we'll do some experiments with that later on and show you that. Anyway, I thought you'd like that. It's just a little little thing. If you've seen these old books, you, you know, you can learn from them. I grew up with them, of course, you know, yeah, because I'm ancient, like, but, uh, 